Welcome to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert, and man, we got a great show for you tonight. John, we got, uh, we got former First Lady Michelle Obama out here, and I'm super excited about that. Yeah. The book's Becoming. The book's Becoming. I've read it. It's a beautiful book. Um, uh, I can't wait to talk about that. But, but until we get there, in the meantime, folks, the Mueller investigation is closing in. Mm. And <laughs> Donald Trump has flown to Argentina. You know, the country all the good guys flee to. <laughs> He's there for the, the big uh, G20 summit. Today, he signed a revised NAFTA agreement, and he was jazzed. We're gathered together this afternoon for a very historic occasion, the signing ceremony for a brand new trade deal. Yes, this afternoon, just one problem. It was 9.24 a.m. <laughs> How do they prepare him for these summits? Mm. Do you just pop a bag on his head, spin him around, and send him out there? <laughs> I don't know what time it is. I don't know where I am or who you are. So I'm just going to go with, hello, Wisconsin, lock her up. <laughs> and I don't, I love, I love the cheese. Yo soy. Trump's foreign policy uh, has hit a bit of a rough patch. He just had to cancel his meeting with bestie Vladimir Putin over a naval skirmish uh, with Ukraine. And in the Senate, back in the States, even Republicans think he's covering up Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's role in the brutal Khashoggi murder. Oh, so wow. things are tense right now for Donald Trump. But not for Putin and Mohammed bin Salman. Check it out. What's up, you cycle? Hey! How's it hanging, bro? More like who you hanging, am I right? Hey! Trump's lying about your murders, he's lying about my murders, too! <laughs> we kill people. <laughs> Speaking, uh... They seem nice. Speaking of Vladimir Putin, uh, you know the, uh, the Trump Tower Moscow? You know oh, yeah, that thing? Yeah, or as Donald yeah. Trump describes it, tower, what tower? There's no tower. Oh, that tower? Yeah, like I've always said, tower. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, to get the deal done during the presidential campaign, the Trump organization planned to give Vladimir Putin a $50 million penthouse. But it's only fair. After all, Putin gave Trump a White House. Wow. Now, now, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Now, $50 million sounds like a lot, but this place was move-in dictator-ready. <laughs> Just look at the plans. It had four bedrooms, three baths, eight holding cells, a walk-in gulag, and an open-concept tiger pit. <laughs> the plan was to give the penthouse to Putin in order to entice other wealthy buyers to purchase their own. All the oligarchs would line up to live in the same building as Putin. Mm. Really? Putin doesn't seem like a great neighbor. <laughs> hey, um, Vlad, I hate to bring this up, but I keep hearing sounds of screaming and begging at night, and the condo board agreed you can't torture after 11 p.m. And it's just, it's just that my kids are trying to sleep in. I mean, I don't have kids. I have no loved ones. Never mind. Please don't annex my apartment. <laughs> Trump responded to the scandal by saying, it's no scandal, tweeting, oh, I get it. I am a very good developer, happily living my life. Okay, that's already three lies right there. <laughs> Here we go, Jim. When I see our country going in the wrong direction, to put it against <laughs> all odds, I decide to run for president and continue to run my business very legal and very cool. Oh, yeah. Very, very cool. cool. I think cool. that's it's just his way of saying, I'm not a crook. <laughs> Nixon should have tried that. I'm very legal. <laughs> very cool. Uh, I'm a way con I'm a way gone cat daddy-o. <laughs> I'm a hep daddy. <laughs> <laughs> He, uh, he tweeted on. I talked about it on the campaign trail. Dot, 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 <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Lightly looked at doing a building somewhere in Russia, put up zero money, zero guarantees, and didn't do the project. Witch hunt. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. He just lightly 
looked at it. Officer, I didn't kill anybody. I just lightly pushed him off the balcony, <laughs> which was very high and very cool. <laughs> and... <laughs> and... I don't know. I don't know. Stop. Stop. You're... It turns out... It turns out uh, these crimes uh, might not be entirely legal because we learned all this from the plea deal of former Trump attorney and guy the vampire is only halfway done with. <laughs> Human Eeyore Michael Cohen. <laughs> See, Cohen was in charge of negotiating uh, the Trump Tower Moscow along with a Russian fixer and Burton Ernie's love child, Felix Sater. <laughs> As part of this deal, the, the, the Trump Tower deal, Cohen handed his emails from Sater over to Mueller, including this one from 2015, I will get Putin on this program and we will get Donald elected. I know how to play it and we will get this done. Buddy, our boy can become president of the USA and we can engineer it. Oh, my. Wow. That's pretty bad. That's, bad That's pretty damning. That. It didn't help that he sent it from... Obvious colluder at treason.ru. <laughs> but I want to point something out. I want to point something out about the verbiage there. Buddy, our boy? Our democracy is being undermined by a community theater production of Guys and Dolls? <laughs> I know how to play it, see? You release the dame's emails, then Buddy, our boy, will be sitting in the catbird seat, and those chumps will be none the wiser. His name is Donald Trump. He's got a big fat rump, and he'll win after the email dump. Can do. Can do. I don't know the... Do you... I don't know that's... Yeah, it's a musical! Believe that song is called Fugue for Douchebags. <laughs> Trump's business isn't the only area of possible collusion. Mueller's also investigating Trump confidant and man screaming, you'll never catch me, Batman! <laughs> Roger Stone. Stone exchanged emails with conspiracy theorist Jerome Corsi instructing Corsi to talk to Julian Assange. And eight days later, Corsi sent this email. Word is, friend in embassy plans two more dumps, one shortly after I'm back, second in October, impact planned to be very damning. Does no one in this conspiracy know how not to get caught? <laughs> I sent that email to myself, and here's what Google suggested as auto-responses. Okay, sounds good, or shut the hell up, we're gonna both go to jail. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> I don't what's the countertone on that? I don't know what's that. Of course, Mueller's asking, he's actually asking this question: Did Stone share this information with then candidate Donald Trump? Well, the two did talk about once a week. And according to Stone, he would initiate the calls. I didn't call him. Oh. Trump sounds thirsty. <laughs> And the calls came at all hours of the night because Trump gets almost no sleep. And now, thanks to him, neither do we. Oh. And here's where... Very grateful people get a lot of work done. Here's where it gets damning. Because Stone received Corsi's WikiLeaks info and the next day Stone had one of his private talks with Trump, but insists that the topic of the hacked emails was never broached, really. What did they talk about in the middle of the night? Hey, Raj. Raj, it's Donnie. What are you wearing? I hope it's those weird glasses and a suit that makes you look like a Fisher-Price toy of a mayor. Hello? Hello? This is my hand. However the Mueller investigation turns out, this has a bittersweet ending because Trump has told some advisors that he no longer talks to Stone. Yeah, you were a little late there, but yeah. <laughs> That's too bad. I mean, yeah. how else is he going to collude on the phone late at night? Well, this new ad has the answer. Are you lonely tonight, looking for hot colluders in your area? It's late, but it's never too late for a little treason. Call 1-555 to 10 years in prison. Call now and lie your ass off later. Operators are standing by. Calls may be recorded for conviction assurance.